Welcome to the ninth presentation of the St. Louis Theater Circle Awards, organized by the St. Louis Theater Circle and brought to you by HEC Media. Thank you so much for joining us. On behalf of HEC Media, I'm your host, Rod Miley. Now, to get things started, here's St. Louis Theater Circle President, Mark Bretz of the Ladue News. Take it away, Mark. Thanks, Rod. It's great to be presenting the Circle Awards again. We'd far prefer to be with you in person, but circumstances prevent that. In 2020, we were almost ready for our live gala when the coronavirus canceled our plans, along with the plans of theater companies everywhere, including St. Louis. That year, our friends at HEC Media stepped in to air the Circle Awards so that everyone could watch in the safety of their own homes. Last year, the situation was worse. We had to skip 2021 entirely. Like theater itself, we are back once again, partnering with HEC for a virtual celebration to fulfill our mission, the recognition of excellence in St. Louis professional theater. After the hiatus, it's not surprising that we have made some changes. We are going to hear from two circle members who thought long and hard about what to do. First, to explain some changes to the categories, here's Jerry Kowarski of HEC's Two on the Eye. For this year's ceremony, we have revised the categories of our acting awards. We are no longer honoring actors and actresses because these traditional categories have no place for non-binary performers. This hurtful exclusion is unacceptable. Some organizations have removed gender completely from their acting categories, but this solution creates another problem. Gender neutral awards reduce women's prospects for honors because the dramatic repertory has so many more roles for men than for women. To prevent harm to non-binary performers without depriving women of opportunities for awards, we are basing our categories on the gender of the character in the script. We don't consider the gender of performers at all. To include non-binary roles, we have added non-binary to the description of each category. For example, two of our awards are for outstanding performer in a musical, male or non-binary role, and outstanding performer in a musical, female or non-binary role. The latter category has one nominee whose role was non-binary. We chose that category because of what the script says about the character. We do not expect our categories to be the last word on this subject. We have tried to take a positive step toward inclusion and equity, and we would be very happy if the conversation about our solution leads to an even better one. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you, Jerry. And now, to address what shows are being honored tonight, here's Tina Farmer of KDHX Radio. In the past, St. Louis theater companies produced 110 to 120 shows a year. In March 2020, the pandemic shut activities down. The Circle made the decision that the 2022 awards would go to work staged in the first three months of 2020 and the last eight months of 2021. We have about 75 productions considered for these awards. Impressive, we think. Many companies kept St. Louis Theatre alive during those months, though not indoors, presenting works outdoors, on radio, or streaming platforms, their devotion to our art warms our hearts. Kudos to the Black Rep, ERA, Fly North, Metro Theater Company, The Midnight Company, The Muni, Nancy Bell, Opera Theater of St. Louis, The Regional Arts Commission, SAIT, St. Lou Fringe, St. Louis Actors Studio, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival, Stray Dog Theater, Tennessee Williams Festival St. Louis, The Repertory Theater of St. Louis, Winninger Productions, and Winter Opera St. Louis. They kept the lights on, and tonight we honor all their efforts. Thank you, Mark, Jerry, and Tina. Now, without further ado, let's welcome our first presenter, Lynn Venhaus of Pop Life St. Louis. The nominees for Outstanding Supporting Performer in a Female or Non-Binary Role in a Comedy 
all made us laugh through situations both realistic and fantastic alike. They are Nicole Angeli, It Is Magic, The Midnight Company, Annie Jajirian, The Thanksgiving Play, Repertory Theater of St. Louis, Colleen Hennigan, Bloomsday, West End Players Guild, Jennifer Thebe Quinn, Flanagan's Wake, Playhouse at Westport Plaza, and Chrissy Watkins, It Is Magic, The Midnight Company. And the award for Outstanding Supporting Performer in a Female or Non-Binary Role in a Comedy goes to Nicole Angeli, It Is Magic, The Midnight Company. Continuing in comedy, the nominees for Outstanding Supporting Performer in a Male or Non-Binary Role are Chuck Brinkley, The Thing, a live parody, Cherokee Street Theater Company, Stephen Cephalou, Jr., The Gradient, Repertory Theater of St. Louis. Joe Hanrahan, It Is Magic, The Midnight Company. Carl Overly, Jr., It Is Magic, The Midnight Company. And Jonathan Spivey, The Thanksgiving Play, Repertory Theater of St. Louis. And the award for Outstanding Supporting Performer in a Male or Non-Binary Role in a Comedy goes to... It's a tie between Joe Hanrahan it is Magic, The Midnight Company. And Carl Overly Jr., It is Magic, The Midnight Company. We'd like to take this moment to acknowledge Andrea Torrance. She gathered, edited, and labeled all of the pictures of these productions that we'll see here tonight. We could not have put this show together without all of her hard work. So Andrea, thank you for helping make this presentation possible. And now, joining us remotely is our next presenter, Bob Cohn of the St. Louis Jewish Light. Comedian Jerry Lewis once contended that women aren't funny, a common enough view for its day. That is absurd, obviously. Just take a look at our nominees for outstanding lead performer in a female or non-binary role in a comedy. They are Shayna Blass, The Thanksgiving Play, Repertory Theater of St. Louis, Michelle Hand, It Is Magic, The Midnight Company, Stephanie Machado, The Gradient, Repertory Theater of St. Louis, Ellie Schwetti, Tinseltown, The Midnight Company, and Jennifer Thebe Quinn, Jake's Women, Moonstone Theater Company. And the award for Outstanding Lead Performer in a Female or Non-Binary Role in a Comedy goes to Ellie Schwetti, Tinseltown, The Midnight Company. Let us continue in comedy with our nominees for Outstanding Performer in a Leading Male or Non-Binary Role. They are Jeff Cummings, Jake's Women, Moonstone Theatre Company, Adam Flores, The Thanksgiving Play, Repertory Theatre of St. Louis, Jeremy Goldmeyer, Art, Stray Dog Theatre, Jordan Moore, Dress the Part, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival, and Garrett Young, Dress the Part, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. And the award for Outstanding Lead Performer in a Male or Non-Binary Role in a Comedy goes to Adam Flores, The Thanksgiving Play, Repertory Theater of St. Louis. Plays would mean a lot less if we couldn't see them. Thank goodness, gifted designers make that possible. The nominees for Outstanding Lighting Design are Joe Clapper, Spell Number 7, The Black Rep, Mexley Cosum, The Gradient, Repertory Theater of St. Louis, Jasmine Lazane, Lama's Tail, Repertory Theater of St. Louis, Seth Reiser, A Christmas Carol, Repertory Theater of St. Louis, and John Wiley, King Lear, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. And the award for Outstanding Lighting Design in a Play goes to Seth Reiser, a Christmas Carol, Repertory Theater of St. Louis. If you'd like to learn more about the changes to this year's categories or the making of this virtual presentation, HEC's Julie Tristan has produced a terrific video that you can find at hecmedia.org. And now, here's our next presenter, Michelle Kenyon of Snoop's Theater Thoughts. Minimal as a murmur or strident as a siren, Sound helps set the mood in a play, and sometimes marks changes in it. 
The nominees for Outstanding Sound Design are Avi Amon, Malima's Tale, Repertory Theater of St. Louis. David R. Molina, King Lear, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. Sada S. B. Proctor, The Gradient, Repertory Theater of St. Louis. Nathan A. Roberts and Charles Coase, A Christmas Carol, Repertory Theater of St. Louis. And Rusty Wandel, Dress the Part, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. And the award for Outstanding Sound Design goes to David R. Molina, King Lear, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. With our next set of awards, joining us remotely is Rob Levy of BroadwayWorld.com. Rab or lavish, spare or extravagant, costumes and sets can tell the audience about a play before the performers speak a single word. The nominees for Outstanding Costume Design in a Play are Didi Ayite, A Christmas Carol, Repertory Theater of St. Louis. Micah Eubanks, King Lear, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. Elizabeth Henning, Tinseltown, The Midnight Company. Christina Lenicky, Dress the Part, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. And Brandon Vaughn, Spell Number 7, The Black Rep. And the award for Outstanding Costume Design in a Play goes to Christina Lenicky, Dress the Part, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. And the nominees for Outstanding Set Design in a Play are Wilson Chin, King Lear, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. Tim Jones, Sweat, The Black Rep. Carolyn Mraz, The Gradient, Repertory Theater of St. Louis. Marjorie and Peter Spack, The Ville, A Vengeance, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. And Marjorie and Peter Spack, Two Trains Running, The Black Rep. And the award for Outstanding Set Design in a Play goes to Marjorie and Peter Spack, The Ville, A Vengeance, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. Determining the results of our voting involves a lot of math, and it was done this year, as in previous years, by a team from PricewaterhouseCoopers through volunteer lawyers and accountants for the arts. Thank you. Now, we welcome our next presenter, Ann Lemons Pollock. She reviews at St. Louis Eats and Drinks Com. In supporting roles, performers take on the kinds of characters who often linger in memory. The nominees for Outstanding Supporting Performer in a Female or Non-Binary Role in a Drama are Kelly Howe, Sweat, The Black Rep, Amy Louie, My Name is Asher Lev, The New Jewish Theater, Alma Martinez, Mojada, A Medea in Los Angeles, Repertory Theater of St. Louis. Elizabeth Teeter, The Glass Menagerie, Tennessee Williams Festival, St. Louis, and Sharissa Whatley, Two Trains Running, The Black Rep. And the award for Outstanding Supporting Performer in a Female or Non-Binary Role in a Drama goes to Elizabeth Teeter, The Glass Menagerie, Tennessee Williams Festival, St. Louis. Next come their counterparts in drama. The nominees for Outstanding Supporting Performer in a Male or Non-Binary Role are Alan Gilmore, King Lear, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival, Brian McKinley, Spell Number 7, The Black Rep, Shane Signorino, A Piece of My Heart, West End Players Guild, Chauncey Thomas, The Glass Menagerie, Tennessee Williams Festival, St. Louis, and Chuck Winning, my name is Asher Lev, the new Jewish theater. And the award for outstanding supporting performer in a male or non-binary role in a drama goes to Brian McKinley, spell number seven, the black rep. And now let's welcome back Michelle Kenyon with the next set of awards. Leading roles in a drama. What actor hasn't dreamed of that kind of part? The nominees for Outstanding Leading Performer in a Female or Non-Binary Role in a Drama are Velma Austin, Sweat, The Black Rep, Carrie Ely, Comfort, St. Louis Actors Studio, Debbie Lennon, Songs for Nobodies, Max and Louis Productions, Michelle Hand, Tiny Beautiful Things, Max and Louis Productions, and Lori McConnell, Anna Perna, 
St. Louis Actors Studio. And the award for Outstanding Leading Performer in a Female or Non-Binary Role in a Drama goes to Lori McConnell, Anna Perna, St. Louis Actors Studio. And the 2022 nominees for Outstanding Leading Performer in a Male or Non-Binary Role in a Drama are Andre De Shields, King Lear, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival, Kambi Gathesha, Malima's Tale, Repertory Theater of St. Louis, John Pearson, Anna Perna, St. Louis Actors Studio, Spencer Sickman, Comfort, St. Louis Actors Studio, and James A. Williams, Two Trains Running, The Black Rep. And the award for Outstanding Leading Performer in a Male or Non-Binary Role in a Drama goes to Andre DeShields, King Lear, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. If you're familiar with HEC's program Spotlight, airing every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. on Channel 11, you know we here at HEC care very deeply about locally produced performing arts. So, we'd like to encourage you to experience all that St. Louis Theatre has to offer. Whether it's in person or through virtual legitimate means, please see a play and help to support the wonderful individuals and organizations we're recognizing tonight. And now, with the next award of the evening, we welcome back Tina Farmer. None of those impressive performers would have had much to do without another group of theater artists, playwrights. Our nominees for Outstanding New Play are Comfort by Neil Labute, St. Louis Actors Studio, The Gradient by Steph Del Rosso, Repertory Theater of St. Louis, Madam by Colin Healy, Fly North Theatricals, now playing third base for the St. Louis Cardinals, Bond, James Bond, by Joe Hanrahan, The Midnight Company, and Tinseltown, by Joe Hanrahan, The Midnight Company. And the award for outstanding new play goes to Tinseltown, by Joe Hanrahan, The Midnight Company. And here's our next presenter, Chuck Lavazzi of KDHX. Often described as the performing art that encompasses all the arts, opera claims its own place at the circle. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Opera are Sean Curran, Johnny Skeeky, Opera Theatre of St. Louis, Levi Hernandez, Johnny Skeeky, Opera Theatre of St. Louis, Karen Kanakis, La Fanchula del West, Winter Opera St. Louis, Patricia Rossette, La Voix Romaine, Opera Theatre of St. Louis, and Leonard Slatkin, Highway 1 USA, Opera Theatre of St. Louis. And the award for Outstanding Achievement in Opera goes to Patricia Brissette, La Voix Humaine, Opera Theatre of St. Louis. And the nominees for Outstanding Production of an Opera are Johnny Skeeky, Opera Theatre of St. Louis, Highway 1 USA, Opera Theatre of St. Louis, La Fanchula del West, Winter Opera, St. Louis, La Voix Humaine, Opera Theater of St. Louis, and Le Comte d'Offman, Union Avenue Opera. And the award for outstanding production of an opera goes to Johnny Skiki, Opera Theater of St. Louis. And now with something special, here's our next presenter, Judith Newmark, the critic emerita of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, and she now reviews at Judy Act Two, in 2020, the St. Louis Theatre Circle presented a special award to Nancy and Ken Kranzberg for their invaluable support of Grand Center and the Arts. The Marcel, the Dotzak, the Grandel, the Kranzberg Center itself with two stages and a visual arts gallery. Thanks to Nancy, Ken, and the Kranzberg Foundation, St. Louis venues have multiplied dramatically in terms of style, convenience, and sheer numbers. They also provide smaller companies with precious support services. We wanted to thank them for it all. But because it was 2020, they were unable to accept their Circle Award in person. We're going to fix that right now as we welcome the Kranzbergs. 
Sometimes Ken and I feel frustrated with St. Louis Theater because it's so rich and so generous. On any given night, we face almost too many choices, and we are talking about high quality work. In fact, we believe that per capita, St. Louis is the most culturally rich city in the nation. We easily hold our own in variety, and in terms of price, distance, and accessibility, we're top notch. In St. Louis, the theater arts are flourishing. We are very proud to be involved in this vibrant community, which encompasses other arts as well as the theater. The arts nourish the soul, and we love playing a part in that feast. Thank you. And now, we welcome Eleanor Mullen. Our circle's special awards are just that, special. We think long and hard before granting one. This year, the decision was easy. The 2022 St. Louis Theater Circle Special Award goes to Michael Hamilton and Jack Lane, co-founders of Stages St. Louis in recognition of their body of work. Theirs is a rare theater story. In 1987, a couple of young guys with big dreams said, let's create our own company. Michael will be the artistic director, Jack will be the executive producer. And because we love musicals, that's what we're going to stage. They proceeded to make that dream come true. Michael directed that first production, Dames at Sea. It was presented at the Kirkwood Community Center's Rhyme Theater, which remained Stage's home for decades. As Michael went on to direct over 100 Stage's productions, he built an informal company of local and out-of-town performers. He and Jack also built an exceptionally devoted audience space. It's a rare night at Stages that the audience isn't packed with happy patrons. And now Stages has a new home, the sleek new Kirkwood Performing Arts Center. Michael has retired, Jack is still involved with Stages and is also a Broadway producer. Over our circle's 10-year history, Stages has been recognized with 16 awards. Michael was twice named Outstanding Director of a Musical, in 2016 for Anything Goes, and in 2020 for Man of La Mancha. They've created quite a legacy, as solid as that new theater and as ephemeral as a song. Michael, Jack, we're proud to salute you with this award, which Jack is accepting for them both. Thank you to the St. Louis Theater Circle for this wonderful honor. When Michael and I first dreamed about stages in the early 1980s, our goal was to create a great theater with substantial jobs for fellow artists and educators. Nearly 40 years ago, Stages St. Louis began with scribbled notes on a restaurant napkin with great hope and intense passion. 36 years later, with incredible support from the Stages staff, board, donors, and patrons, Michael and I and Stages have achieved more than we could possibly have imagined. As the saying goes, it takes a village, and we have had an extraordinary village of support. As Michael enjoys his well-deserved retirement, and I determine what new trouble I want to cause in St. Louis and beyond, we will remain forever grateful to everyone who has positively touched stages during our tenure. Stages has been set up for a thrilling new chapter in the Kirkwood Performing Arts Center, and we cannot wait to see how it all unfolds. Thank you for this great honor. Now, let's present some more awards with Steve Allen of Stage Door. Now we turn to musicals, a theatrical style that audiences in St. Louis cherish at least as much as do its legion of fans around the world. The nominees for Outstanding Musical Director are Charlie Alterman, Chicago, The Muni, Colin Healy, Madam, Fly North Theatricals, Jeremy Jacobs, Jersey Boys, Stages St. Louis, Herb Sam, Dreaming Zenzeal, Repertory Theater of St. Louis, and Nicholas Valdez, Head Over Heels, New Line Theater. And the award for Outstanding Musical Director goes to Charlie Alterman, Chicago, The Muni. And the circle nominees for Outstanding Choreographer are William Carlos Angulo, On Your Feet, The Muni, Crivin De Hoot Boyd, a Christmas Carol, Repertory Theater of St. Louis. Marjani Fort Sanders, Dreaming Zen Zeal, Repertory Theater of St. Louis. Dennis Jones, Chicago, The Muni. And Dana Lewis, Jersey Boys, Stages St. Louis. And the award for Outstanding Choreographer goes to Dennis Jones, Chicago, The Muni. 
Now, once more, here's Lynn Venhouse. In musicals, supporting performers are often blessed with an unforgettable number or two, as well as a good role. And these performers all made the most of it. The nominees for Outstanding Supporting Performer in a Female or Non-Binary Role in a Musical are Taylor Cheatham, Head Over Heels, New Line Theater, Natasia Diaz, On Your Feet, The Muni, Brianna Marie Parham, The Sound of Music, The Muni, Elizabeth Teeter, The Sound of Music, The Muni, and Zoe Vonderhaar, Always Patsy Cline, Stages St. Louis. And the award for Outstanding Supporting Performer in a Female or Non-Binary Role in a Musical goes to Natasia Diaz, On Your Feet, The Muni. And the nominees for Outstanding Supporting Performer in a Male or Non-Binary Role in a Musical are Brent Michael DeRoma, Jersey Boys, Stages St. Louis. Jason Michael Evans, Jersey Boys, Stages St. Louis. Adam Heller, Chicago, The Muni. Ryan Jesse, Jersey Boys, Stages St. Louis. And Michael Kilgore, Smokey Joe's Cafe, The Muni. And the award for Outstanding Supporting Performer in a Male or Non-Binary Role in a Musical goes to Adam Heller, Chicago, The Muni. With our next set of awards, we have someone longtime HEC viewers are sure to recognize. Here's Bob Wilcox of Two on the Aisle. Designers for musical theater face the same challenges as designers for plays, along with the extra challenges posed by dance numbers. The nominees for Outstanding Lighting Design in a Musical are Rob Denton, Chicago at the Muni, Shelby Laura, The Sound of Music, also at the Muni, Sean M. Savoy, always Patsy Cline at Stages St. Louis, and again, Sean M. Savoy, Jersey Boys, again at Stages St. Louis. And Yi Zhao, Dreaming Zenzil, Repertory Theater of St. Louis. And the award for Outstanding Lighting Design in a Musical goes to Sean M. Savoy, Jersey Boys, Stages St. Louis. Our nominees for Outstanding Set Design in a Musical are Edward E. Haynes, Jr. and Kevin Loney, Smokey Joe's Cafe at the Muni, Tim McAbee and Sean Doohan, Chicago at the Muni, Tim McAbee and Kate Ducey, On Your Feet at the Muni, Michael Schweikart and Kate Hevner, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, the Muni, and James Wolk, Jersey Boys, Stages St. Louis. And the award for Outstanding Set Design in a Musical goes to Edward E. Haynes Jr. and Kevin Loney, Smokey Joe's Cafe, the Muni. And the nominees for Outstanding Costume Design in a Musical are Leon Dobkowski, On Your Feet at the Muni, Eileen Engel, Madam, Fly North Theatricals, Courtney Gibson and Sarah Porter, Head Over Heels at New Line Theater, Sully Rotke, Smokey Joe's Cafe at the Muni, and Emily Rebholtz, Chicago at the Muni. And the award for Outstanding Costume Design in a Musical goes to Emily Rebholtz, Chicago, The Muni. We'd like to take this moment to remind you that you can read local theater reviews by Bob Wilcox and Jerry Kowarski online at hecmedia.org. There, you can also find archived episodes of Two on the Aisle. Again, that's hecmedia.org. And now, we welcome our next presenter, Judith Newmark. Whether the roles they play are romantic or tough, glamorous or just folks, musical stars always stake a special claim to the spotlight. 
The nominees for Outstanding Leading Performer in a Female or Non-Binary Role in a Musical are Diana DeGarmo, Always Patsy Cline, Stage of St. Louis. J. Harrison G., Chicago, The Muni. Kimmy Kid Booker, Madam, Fly North Theatricals. Kate Rockwell, The Sound of Music, The Muni. And Somi, Dreaming Zenzile, Repertory Theater of St. Louis. And the award for Outstanding Leading Performer in a Female or Non-Binary Role in a Musical goes to Diana DeGarmo, Always Patsy Cline, Stages St. Louis. And the nominees for Outstanding Leading Performer in a Male or Non-Binary Role in a Musical are Christopher Kale Jones, Jersey Boys, Stages St. Louis. Chris Kernan, The Story of My Life, New Line Theater. James T. Lane, Chicago, The Muni. Omar Lopez Sapero, On Your Feet, The Muni. And Jeffrey M. Wright, The Story of My Life, New Line Theater. And the award for Outstanding Leading Performer in a Male or Non-Binary Role in a Musical goes to Christopher Kale Jones, Jersey Boys, Stages St. Louis. At this time, we will observe a moment of silence to remember and honor the members of the local professional theater community that we have lost in the past year. and we continue our presentation with Calvin Wilson, theater critic for the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. We've all savored solo performances and two-handers, but the ensemble show, in which everyone must rely on everyone else, in many ways captures the spirit of theater. It's a group effort. The 2022 nominees for Outstanding Ensemble in a Comedy are Art, Straight Dog Theater, Dress the Part, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival, It Is Magic, The Midnight Company, The Thanksgiving Play, Repertory Theater of St. Louis, and Wildfire, Upstream Theater. And the award for Outstanding Ensemble in a Comedy goes to, it's a tie between Dress the Part, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival, and It Is Magic, The Midnight Company. Our nominees for Outstanding Ensemble in a Drama are King Lear, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival, Malima's Tale, Repertory Theater of St. Louis, Spell Number no. 7, The Black Rep, Sweat, The Black Rep, and Two Trains Running, The Black Rep. And the award for Outstanding Ensemble in a Drama goes to Two Trains Running, The Black Rep. And the singing and dancing nominees for Outstanding Ensemble in a Musical are Chicago, The Muni, Head Over Hills, New Line Theater, Jersey Boys, Stages St. Louis, Madam, Fly North Theatricals, and Smokey Joe's Cafe, The Muni. And the award for Outstanding Ensemble in a Musical goes to Chicago, the Muni. Now, we'd like to welcome back St. Louis Theater Circle President, Mark Bretz. Whether a production involves just a few artists or dozens of them, the director must make sure that they are all on the same page, all doing their parts to create a cohesive, resonant effort. It's impressive how many here do that so well. The Circle nominees for Outstanding Director of a Comedy are Eddie Cofield, Jake Swimmin, Moonstone Theater Company. GQ and JQ, Dress the Part, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. Suki Peters, It Is Magic, The Midnight Company. Amelia Acosta Powell, The Thanksgiving Play, Repertory Theater of St. Louis. And Rachel Tibbetts, Tinseltown, The Midnight Company. 
And the award for Outstanding Director of a Comedy goes to... GQ and JQ, Dress the Park, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. The 2022 nominees for Outstanding Director of a Drama are Carl Cofield, King Lear, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. Ron Himes, Sweat, The Black Rep. Brian Holfeld, The Glass Menagerie, Tennessee Williams Festival, St. Louis. Anna Maria Pileggi, Annapurna, St. Louis Actors Studio. And Ed Smith, Two Trains Running, The Black Rep. And the award for Outstanding Director of a Drama goes to Carl Cofield, King Lear, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. And once again, here's Chuck Lavazzi. The Circle nominees for Outstanding Director of a Musical are Marsha Milgram Dodge, Smokey Joe's Cafe, The Muni, Michael Hamilton, Always Patsy Cline, Stages St. Louis, Michael Hamilton, Jersey Boys, Stages St. Louis, Dennis Jones, Chicago, The Muni, and Scott Miller and Mike Doughty Windsor, Head Over Heels, New Line Theater. And the award for Outstanding Director of a Musical goes to Dennis Jones, Chicago, The Muni. And at this time, we'd like to welcome back Ann Lemons Pollock. All the members of the St. Louis Theater Circle participate in the Circle Awards. We all see and review local professional theater. We all vote on the awards. We all present them. But since the Circle Awards debuted in 2013, three members of our group have made sure it all happened. They took on an enormous amount of work. They did it year in and year out, and they enabled all of us to celebrate local theater together. They're Eleanor Mullen, Jerry Kowarski, and Judith Newmark. We honor them now as all three are stepping down. Let's start with Eleanor, who's the administrator of the Circle and the producer of the Circle Awards. As an actor, she came to the Circle with a long list of credits on St. Louis stages, appearing with the West End Theater Guild, Act Inc., the Kirkwood Theater Guild, and many others. She served on the boards of West End and Act Inc. for decades, and that experience came in very handy here. It's hard to overstate Jerry's contributions. The math portion of his brain works exceptionally well. He tweaked the weighted system we use to ensure fairness in nominating and voting for the Circle Awards. He's our statistician and our record keeper. His contributions are truly incalculable. Judy was the Post-Dispatch theater critic when she and Mark Bretz came up with the idea for the St. Louis Theater Circle. She's been vice president of the board from the start. Since she retired from the Post, she's continued to review at her blog, Judy, Act Two. She's also written every single Circle Awards show that we've staged. Who will carry on for the Circle? Tina Farmer will produce, Lynn Van House will write, and we still are looking for someone to step into Jerry's enormous shoes. Tonight, we thank them for everything. We certainly do. And now, here are our three veterans with the final awards. Once the applause has ended and the house lights have come back on, the audience is left with the memory of a production in its totality. That, of course, involves many, many components, which is why the circle gives so many awards, and some of them make us laugh. The nominees for Outstanding Production of a Comedy are Dress the Part, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival, It is Magic, The Midnight Company, Jake's Women, Moonlight Theater Company, The Thanksgiving Play, Repertory Theater of St. Louis, and Tinseltown, The Midnight Company. And the award for Outstanding Production of a Comedy goes to Dress the Part, St. Louis Shakespeare Festival. Could Shakespeare have been wrong? The play is still a play on the page, but for the full experience, the production is the thing. And we have savored many. Our nominees for Outstanding Production of a Drama are The Glass Menagerie, Tennessee Williams Festival St. Louis, King Lear, 
St. Louis Shakespeare Festival, Malima's Tale, Repertory Theater of St. Louis, Sweat, The Black Rep, and Two Trains Running, The Black Rep. And the award for outstanding production of a drama goes to Two Trains Running, The Black Rep. Musicals exercise a special power. Hear just a few bars of a song, and you're back at the theater, back at a dazzling performance. Musicals can stay with you for a lifetime. Our 2022 nominees for Outstanding Production of a Musical are Always Patsy Cline, Stage of St. Louis. Chicago, The Muni. Head Over Heels, New Line Theater. Jersey Boys, Stage of St. Louis. And Smokey Joe's Cafe, The Muni. And the award for outstanding production of a musical goes to Chicago, The Muni. And this concludes AGC Media's presentation of the 2022 St. Louis Theater Circle Awards honoring outstanding achievements in locally produced professional theater. Thank you so much for joining us, and congratulations to all of the honorees. For ATC Media, I'm Rod Miley.